A hungry, hungry black hole. Six potential exomoons and Rocket Lab's unlucky 13th launch. It's Tuesday, June 7, 2020. I'm Matt Miller. This is Talkin' Science. With the latest science and space news five days a week across Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts and YouTube, this is Talkin' Science with Dr Brad Tucker and Matt Miller. And it is a very warm Trek Zone welcome on these cold winter mornings to Dr. Brad Tucker. Brad, happy Tuesday. How's it going? Really good, my friend, really good. Uh, winter is certainly upon yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, I guess for people in like tropical climates where it gets to single digits for once a decade, but <laughs> that's in reality. It's been here for a while, but yes, it's definitely... Um, in full swing, we had essentially just fog all day, so we couldn't we didn't see the sun yesterday. Oh wow! It didn't exist. <laughs> Apparently, the sun had been destroyed. Now, can I just say <laughs> that, that there has been frost, overnight frost, up here in Queensland the last couple of mornings, uh, and here where we are, sand doesn't count as frost. <sighs> And here where we are near Ipswich, it's been single digits for much of the day. Uh, I, okay, well, much of the night. <laughs> <laughs> At least the sun has warmth. This is the thing. When I, whenever I travel south, whenever I've been to Canberra, whenever I've been to Tasmania, the sun doesn't have a bite. It doesn't warm you up during the day. It just stays cold. That's right. It's just bright. There's dark <laughs> yes. cold and bright cold. <laughs> Th- those are the two things of winter here uh, in the south. Uh, it's, it's apparent temperature right now, just for our, our listeners, it's uh, minus five outside oh my Canberra. Gosh. Well, you, you're encouraging me to uh, to find what the apparent temperature here is uh, where I am. Oh, look, it feels like minus point one point one. I was actually surprised by this. Our high got to nine yesterday. <laughs> Our high yesterday was twenty two. Oh God, we haven't had that in like six months. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, well, we should move on to talking science because uh, hey, look, it, you know, it's it's always interesting when we talk about you know, even had the temperature variations here on Earth, and when we talk about other planets and moons and. Uh, we were talking about uh, Pluto last week. Uh, you, you, you just see how dramatically much it can change, you know, even on Earth. And then, you know, thinking about when you change hundreds of millions of kilometers, how much that can really uh, change the uh, nature of the planet. Especially since we're still in the same country. And, and uh, our <laughs> listeners in the U.S. would be the same. Differences from Washington to L.A. But people in Spain may not get it. The U.K. may not get That's it. That's true. You know, like... You know, it really is cold here in Australia. And, and for, for people listening, the difference between where uh, Matt is and where I am is is three to three and a half degrees in latitude. So that's kind of like Southern California to Northern California. And I don't even think there's that much of a temperature variation uh, in those locations. No, that's right. Which is incredible. All right, well, more space facts, more science facts from Dr. Brad Tucker on social <laughs> media, Dr. Brad Tucker on Facebook, Tucker 22 on Twitter. I, I guess we're just retweeting uh, Brad for those <laughs> science facts, but we do have some pretty cool podcasts as well that uh, you can check out by following uh, Trek Zone all over social media. Brad, <laughs> let's uh, let's get on with the show. <laughs> Talking Science Headlines. And our first headline uh, this week is the Mars Perseverance rover. It's been delayed again. That's right. Uh, you know, we've talked about that. It was originally gearing up for a 17th July launch, which means we'd be covering it in the show next week. Uh, however, that is not the case. It has been delayed twice, not both uh, because of the instrument, but because of, of the rocket now aiming for a 30 July launch. So, uh, you know, it's getting towards the end of the window, so they're, they're they are running out of time, but they're still uh, on track to launch in the allotted window uh, in the next month. And we'll be sure to cover all of the delays and and the whole mission as a whole uh, when it actually does get really close to launching, uh, or even when it's launched. Uh, but speaking of launches, uh, we're going to find out more about Spaceship Two, uh, Virgin Galactic's uh, next space liner. They've got a bit of a YouTube event planned on July 28th. That's right. It's been a, a you know an important thing what it's exactly going to look like for this rocket and or you know spaceship and uh, the the cabin. So you know kind of what your accommodation or your travel style will be. Uh, will be unveiled later this month. So it should be pretty exciting to see what $250,000 for a space holiday will get you. Everything seems to be happening at the end of July. Yeah, look, it's going to be a packed show, let's just tell you people. (laughs) 
Well, the end of July is where it's at. It's going to be huge. That Atlas rocket is going to look absolutely impressive when it finally does take flight. And Spaceship 2, I don't know whether I can afford a ticket now or ever, really. <laughs> uh, but that's going to be very exciting to have a look inside the cockpit and see exactly how all these rich people are going to make it into orbit. Well, the stories of the week are coming up right after we teach you about how to get social with Trackzone. You can get social with Trekzone. Australia's unofficial home of Star Trek is everywhere you are. Just search for Trekzone. And Brad, uh, as we do each and every week, three stories uh, to fill up our show, fill up our goodness of science news and space news as well. Uh, and this one has me really, really worried. A black hole that's eating a sun a day. What have you done to me, Brad? Why, why have you given me nightmares? Because it's 2020 and it's July, so... <laughs> something has to happen. Something has to happen. No, luckily this is uh, not a disaster that we'll have any time soon. You know, maybe in 20 <laughs> billion years. So this is a, 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 a very massive black hole. So this black hole is 34 billion times the mass of our sun. So... To put this in the scale, the supermassive black hole in our galaxy, what we call Sagittarius A star, is 4 million times the mass of our sun. This thing is 34 billion times the mass of our sun. And because it's so big, and the gravity and what we call the accretion disk, the, the gas and stars spinning around it, it's literally sucking in about a sun a day in terms of uh, stuff. Well, the scale of that black hole is absolutely incredible. I just can't wrap my head around just how big that is. It's bigger than our galaxy. Uh, just incredible. Well, to continue hearing about that hungry, hungry black hole, look for episode number 401 on our podcasting series. Or if you're on YouTube, click the card in the top of the video on Facebook Watch as well. Uh, look for episode number 401 and Brad and I are diving in to that black hole. Let's keep going. The next story of the week is about exomoons. Now, I didn't realize that Hubble had potentially found a couple of these, and now Kepler data has picked up possibly six more that Brad and I are discussing in this next Talking Science story of the week. Uh, I'm loving this one. Exomoons are now a thing. Uh, not just now, but um, they've been posited. They've been possibly discovered. And now there's a few more candidates that have been discovered. We've talked a lot about exoplanets and the, the planets being found and the diversity range from big Neptune things to Jupiter things to, to Earth-like things. And, and one of the big questions is always, you know, we know how common planets are now. What about the moons? We see all of the moons in our solar system. What about exomoons, moons around those planets, around other stars? And, and a few have been hinted at in the past, and I think there's probably two that are fairly believed to be confirmed, but a, a, a new analysis of some of the interesting objects from the Kepler Space Telescope has found probably six potential new moons, so definitely boosting the pool of known exomoons. Well, it really does make sense that exomoons exist, doesn't it? We've discovered exoplanets, uh, and given that our solar system isn't unique, uh, as we've learned, uh, moons are pretty common, it seems. So, uh, And I didn't realise that Hubble had spotted a couple many, many years ago, and now Kepler data as well before the mission ended in 2018. has discovered six potential candidates. That's pretty exciting, and hopefully we get confirmation of that really soon. Well, to continue listening to Brad and I talking about exomoons, look for episode number 402 uh, on our podcasting app or on Facebook Watch. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, we'll click the card somewhere up here uh, and that'll beam you straight over to episode number 402. All righty, well, let's get into our final talking science story of the week. And unfortunately, Rocket Labs's 13th launch has been unsuccessful and seven customers have lost their payloads. Uh, Dr. Brad Tucker and I are discussing the implications of this one in this Talking Science Story of the Week. All right, Brad, our last story of the week for this week, uh, Rocket Labs. It, uh, the California-based company uh, performed the most rapid turnaround between launches uh, with its Electron uh, satellite. Unfortunately, Flight 13 has proven to be... Uh, a bit unlucky. Yeah, look, you know, it, it, it was heartbreaking over the weekend to see, as you said, they had the quick turnaround. Uh, they actually moved up the launch window a tad because of just, you know, ideal weather. 
And, it, you know, they did all their normal checks, as you always do. Everything was go. The, the early part of the launch was fine. A few minutes into the launch, especially as they're entering that second stage, they did experience anomaly. And if people were watching a replay of the video recorded, you know, the video freezes out. And then a minute later, you, you kind of hear the critical parts. And surprisingly, the critical part is, oh, it didn't blow up. You know, that, that doesn't really happen as much as you think. It's, oh, we're losing speed. As soon as you start, start to lose speed, you don't have extra fuel, the energy you need, the escape velocity, all of that stuff just dramatically changes. And you're talking about fractions of a second that if it doesn't go right, you don't reach orbit. Uh, and that's eventually what we saw, and it, and it unfortunately came back to Earth, not in the way everyone wanted. Well, Brad, a collection of stories, unsuccessful launches, uh, but learning from mistakes, exomoons, and of course that hungry, hungry black hole. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, we, we've gone from distant destroying things to accidents closer to home and, and everywhere in between, unfortunately. I was wondering where you were going to go with that one. <laughs> no one knows. It's only where we end up. <laughs> Absolutely, Brad. Well, of course, we've got the stories of the week to come for the rest of this week. Talking Science Live on Saturday, and you'll be back again for another recording next Tuesday for another week of Talking Science. Thanks for being here, and we'll catch you again real soon. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan.